Welcome to a brand new season of Spotlight with Belinda Lee. We begin the season with a loud bang by welcoming Dr. Engineer Swat Al Shamdi, who is a pioneer in the aviation industry in the UAE. And Dr. Engineer Swat was the first female aircraft engineer in the UAE specializing in landing gear. That is important. Guys, we can take off, but we need to know how to land. She's qualified as an aircraft engineer in London before returning to Dubai to pursue a role in her home country. Well, today, Swat is working in the research and advisory role at Abu Dhabi Airport, as well as a consultant advisory for other women and young students on how to achieve a career in the aviation industry. See, she also teaches at the same time, and she writes novels. Oh my goodness. She teaches, she writes novels, she makes sure the landing gear works in the aircraft. She is definitely doing an important role for all of us. Now, would you like to know what she is all about? She is an amazing woman. She inspires many, and she definitely inspires me. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Linda. It's my pleasure, and thank you for this amazing introduction. It's, um, it's my pleasure to be with you in the show. When you said yes, I was um, I was flying to the moon. When I read your bio, I was not only so impressed, but the fact that you're the first Emirati female to do it. I mean, share with us and the audience too as well. How did you decide to even come into this industry? I mean, it's a very male-dominant industry. Yes, it is um, still, but the percentage high with women in the aviation industry, not like only aircraft engineer, pilots, uh, aviation medical. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of major come under the industry. But I was the crazy youngest girl in my family. I, uh, we are a family, all medical. You uh -huh. name the doctor a medical. And my mom always like, I want you to be a medical. Uh -huh. And I told her, I promise I'll be a doctor, but in mechanical. And I was always stealing the toy from my brothers, <laughs> like cars, airplane, fixing things. And my mom, she always tell me like, you are not a boy. And I said, no <laughs> thing in dictionary say for you that if you are fixing car, airplane, mm -hmm. playing with the, such a toy, it's only for boy. Women can enjoy. And I started design, this, um, putting in my mind, Suhad, you need to change the mentality of the people. You need to show the woman she can with high heels, with safety shoes, she mm. can be under the aircraft, under a car, and as well with, with her glamming, makeup, and she can show what she passionate about. And because those days, it's not allowed women to be in um, mm -hmm. such a field. So uh, I got a scholarship from His Highness Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the ruler of uh, Dubai. And I went to UK. I was only 16 years old. Oh, wow. And you know, the life has changed after that. Yes. You, when you come to near your dream mm -hmm. is different, mm -hmm. but the responsibility is higher. When you say that your family is from a medical field and, and it's, it's vastly different. We're talking about a human organic uh, element to something really hard, black and white mechanic. It's, it's so different. Now, why do you think you steer away from it? I mean, it's, I know it's your passion, but why do you like mechanics so much? Mechanic, it's make you more patient. It's make you more focused. And you know, the woman, she is a multitask. She can do many things at the same time. She can think about many things at the same time. With my respect to men, they are very straight for one focus, one line, one idea. And this field makes me more close to my passion mm -hmm. because I always say I got married, first married to my aircraft. <laughs> and to be near, I was thinking pilots, they are flying, uh -huh. cabin crew, they are inside. Uh -huh. But to make you near to the aircraft, to see it in details, it's the most important. Oh, wow. And the aircraft engineer is uh, more responsible. And any takeoff of the aircraft or landed and you do a huge job, yes. you, you, you are not responsible only about a, a subject or a component. Yes. You are responsible about the human, yes. the passenger, yes. the cabin crew. And any success of a flying takeoff or landing mm -hmm. or any project, you, you, you will feel this, you are proud. You are part of the success. Yes. And this is what makes me always in challenges because I love to be in challenges. <laughs> <laughs> That's bravo. That's really well said. Um, 
You're right. I mean, females love to multitask. They like to do different things. But when you went to, let's say, UK, when you start your education and you're diving into something you're really passionate at, have you ever thought, okay, this is too much for me? Is this is more than I expected? Or do you think that this is what I really love? In the beginning, yes, the beginning. especially, you know, you are alone, 16 years old, yes. and for a young country, you are not fluent in English. I came from a school, we never learn English except the basic. Mm -hmm. So you, ha you are responsible about yourself, your education, your food, when you are sick, uh, the house, and how you educate yourself to learn and success on your education side. It's helped me a lot now with my kids. And I sometimes, as a human, you said, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. But when you imagine how you will be changing or mm -hmm. helping other girls, because those days, no one helped me. When you knock to any door, they were kept laughing at me or pulling me because I'm not good in English or because I'm over fat and overweight. I remember I was um, so huge. I was exactly 159.8 kg. And people, they were pulling me that you will be a crashing and breaking the wing of the uh, aircraft. And I wanted to make women, when they hear my story, that maybe another girl in the, will listen to this interview. Mm -hmm. She's facing the same. She can stand for herself, for other. And I promised myself, if I will succeed and mm -hmm. I will graduate, any new generation, either mm -hmm. woman, either girl, either boy, I will make sure that they stand for their dream. And this is what make me in this industry 18 years now. Oh my goodness. I mean, when you do something passionate, it doesn't seem like work. It just seems lots of fun because you're doing it every day. Like what you're you are dating. Love. Say, if you're going to your work like you are dating your career, oh my goodness. you will enjoy it. Oh, absolutely. You will never think about how many hours you are working, yes. how difficult the environment, especially the aviation environment, is very tough environment, mm. the working hour, uh, the heat, and sometimes yes. uh, the working with a man, it's 99% they are male. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a um, tough environment. But if you are passionate about your career, you will never think about all these things. You will enjoy True. it day by day. We all know why you choose the career, because you love it. Now, since you've been in it, are there any setbacks and challenges that you have faced? Challenges always that we are facing in our career, mm -hmm. not only mine. I think any woman, um, because we do believe that we, every woman born with a power, mm -hmm. but she never gets her opportunity mm. or uh, the time to trust her, to give the faith to women, to be a leader in such a field. Yes. They, you will reach to a, a position and then they will stop you, will they try to pull you down or make you to change your mind while you go, don't work in the office, change mm -hmm. your field. And this is what make me feel work double than the male. Uh, let me to show the world what I'm doing. I should complete what is next. Because in this industry, you have to choose. Either you stay in the same level as mm -hmm. an aircraft engineer, or you have to complete your education to teach a student or to get licensed. It's always a studying mm. every aircraft. Every year, it's a growing in the industry, so you have to learn, educate yourself. So to make sure that you are still fixed, capable to continue working on an aircraft engineer. Even now, as a consultant, it's um, make me read more about it. The challenges, year after year, you see the industry is growing. Mm -hmm. You have to grow with it. And as a woman in this field, you have to show to work double than the male, unfortunately. It's very true. We're competing in a, in a male-dominant industry where the male physically are stronger than us, right? Because, you know, this is what they put in our mind. Mm -hmm. That, But when you come to the famous chef in the world, the famous fashion designer, all they are male. Mm -hmm. And we, we trust them. The makeup artists, when yes. you go... Them. It's a male. We never say stop. It's, it's belong to a woman. I think what we need the faith that women can be in any field. It's not a competition. Mm -hmm. She can be beside them. And this is Very what uh, I think we need to teach and educate the new generation that you are not in a competition. Mm -hmm. You no. are equal. Absolutely, absolutely. We are we are equally qualified to do what yes. male can do. Yes. We might have to work a little harder, guys, but you know, or gals. Now, how does it feel to be the number one? Because 
it, it's um, it's a very big title, right? It, when you sit first and not second or third, it becomes like, oh wow, you're the first one. How does it feel? You know, I never thought about a title. I I do believe I love my name yes. because. <laughs> You know, but this is the name. This is the first title you get it as a sister mm -hmm. and a daughter. When I graduated and came back and they told me you are the first interview. Uh -huh. And they told me like, you are the first female in United Arab Emirates. Mm -hmm. And it's make me so happy. Mm -hmm. But it's increased my responsibility because yes. it's not a just title. Yes. It's so nice to have a title. But what is next? What I learned from our leader, and especially when you met them, they told you, be responsible, use it very well. Mm -hmm. And this is make me to think about it. What should I do with this title? Mm -hmm. Just to hang the, the certificate, the interview over the wall, or I should help other girls. And for there, we, we have found a, a non-profit organization called Women Innovation, mm -hmm. which we help every year to uh, a student to get a scholarship, to help them to reach to their career. And another woman, she faced difficulty to uh, in the same industry as aviation industry. Mm -hmm. And year after year, I noticed that the college and university, they were rejecting girls to uh, study aeronautical engineering. Mm -hmm. I helped them to enter. And wow. now we have many universities in the United Arab Emirates accepting women to study aeronautical Fantastic. engineering. And this is what makes me more responsible and think about this title very well. You, you've actually pioneered or you path the road for the other uh, girls to yes. be in this industry. I mean, it's huge. It's very huge. And now, You're the fighting. Percentage, <laughs> that now we have 34%, which is that, wow. yes, less, but we are hoping that it's increased more. And, and now you can see a lot. When I see my students and the girl where they were in the school and now they are working, it's make me feel like, Relieved, like yes, one day when and rewarded. Yes, this is the best reward you can get. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, by helping someone else achieve their dreams. Yes. absolutely. As you are encouraging other females to be um, entering the aviation line, there's got to be uh, girls that are just not confident because a lot of women out there we faces the confidence level of can I do it? Um, am I going to be as good as her? Or uh, what if I get an encounter now? How do you encourage women not to give up their dreams? I always share my story because, as I told you, Blenda, I face a, a very difficult people. They were, I never had this confidence. You know, when, when, when people judge you because of your size of your body, your look, you hmm. are not good in English, I remember the first word I said that for the teacher in mm -hmm. the university. I want to tell him, you look so handsome today with your suit because he were going to, to a, a wedding, I remember. Yes. And I told him, I still remember the sentence, you look like handsome. And mm -hmm. everyone in the class, they were laughing at me. And he came to me and he said, Suhad, you, thank you, you are only person, say a good word for me today mm -hmm. and I will help you and then you will help other. You need to ch change for yourself, not for other. And this is when I decided like, I want people to believe on myself mm -hmm. and my dream. So when I share them my story, like, mm -hmm. you know, when you are overweight, when you are not good in English, people pointing you, judging you. Mm. You know, it's, I remember they were from more than 20 years, they were laughing at me and you, they were saying, you are just a dreaming. I share with them my story. Mm -hmm. I go to the school. I go to university. A lot of students, they came that we don't have a confidence. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. you know, you build the confidence. When you share your real story, you will be honest with the people, especially, I said, for the expert, not only in the vision, in any field. When you share your story, be honest with them. Tell them what the challenge is, how to build the confidence. Mm -hmm. And trust yourself. And I always tell them, put in a mirror in your, your room your house and say a lot be grateful that you are still alive mm -hmm. you can give to the world and you know when they come back to me sending me through the social media or email like you change our life mm -hmm. i know there's someone i can help and this is the time we we can we have to say connect mm -hmm. that the places they're always for women and then for men if i help you i help the other 
tomorrow we I don't know who, who might help my son. That is true. And that this is, is what true. I tell through my social media every Saturday. Yes. They're a grateful, um, let's say, it's called it says. Yes. And I post it every day, every Saturday. And it's a spread to a lot of my, my followers. And this is a message for the young generation, especially mm -hmm. I focus on them, how to build the confidence, how to use their dream, how can change the family mentality and thinking because not all family will accept you to be with safety shoes, uniform, uh, and 16 hours, 14 hours, the flying from country. I show them the real life, how it should be. Mm -hmm. It's, not, it's a, not just a pink life, to be honest. People look at uh, successful individuals and they smile and it goes, I want to be like him or I want to be like her. And they have no one, they don't understand the process that this person yeah. went through to get there. Yes. And also successful people, they also contribute back to the society. Like you and I both talk, you have your own way and I have my own way of communicating back, helping another person see their fullest potential. Yes. Um, it is, it is hard to, to pass down that. It's like a baton. You, you've got it, you pass on to the next one and the next one. And, and it comes full circle. Yes. It's like a karma, you know? It's a karma. And I think when you put any sentence in front of your face and you keep repeating. So for example, for me, anyone knows Suad, they will know like the quote I said, put it always, if you can dream it, you can do it and achieve it with bigger smile. And if you put a quote in front of your face, uh -huh. Uh, and, and it will make you remember yourself mm -hmm. and be grateful to yourself and have faith in yourself. Yes. And I always say for people, put it in front. Like I put it in my office. I put it in my car, in mm. my room. And every time I read it, it reminds me, you. encourage me yes. to continue day by day, even if it's difficulty. And maybe it's good for me, not good for other. Like some of the people can use another card. And this is what we need. Yes. Yes, just true. Now, you said something really important. You look at your own quote and goes, it encourages you. So same thing as the uh, the number of years that we've gone through the challenges and all that, we're not we're not flawless. We're, we're not. We have our pro problems too as well. Yes. <laughs> and we need encouragement to push on another day. So uh, well said, well said. Now, you you have a family. Yes. Your kids must be thinking, oh my gosh, my mom is the <laughs> First and women <laughs> in aviation. They must be so proud. Yeah, I have two boys. Yusuf, he is entering nine because I always fight with him. You are still eight and a half. And he said, mommy, I'm nine. And and this is the good thing. And um, Sultan, we call him cappuccino. Mm -hmm. And he's four years old. And, and why do you call him cappuccino? Because, you know, for nine months, I was only drinking coffee and eating jalaxi. And and. I remember people have said, if he come as a natural delivery, yeah. we will call him cappuccino. And now if you call him, only in the school call me Sultan, yeah. but real ha life, cappuccino. So <laughs> he's, he's really the cappuccino of our life. And the good things like, when, especially when in our field, people think like, if you enter to a very challenging environment and field, you're thinking to grow, continue your education, you will never get to, uh, married. You will never get to a family. You will never get children. And I hate when people judge you. You don't know me what I'm capable of. So when I bring my first son, they told me you will never get the second one. And I, I have a board in my house. Mm -hmm. I told them, like, listen, this is my schedule, especially with the uh, old uh, son. I, I like today when I'm coming for this interview, he did search. He want to know what, what mommy she's interviewing with who, what the story, and, and he's about. And I think the right things I do that I share my schedule with them, mm -hmm. and they put me the positive message early in the morning, sometimes evening before they go to sleep, so I can read it if I'm going to my duty. And I believe if you want to be succeed in your life, you mm -hmm. have to be having a successful family and and family support you yes and i always yeah. think what i want them to be proud of me mm -hmm. and help their women i teach them how to respect the girl mm -hmm. so this is what uh it's my two boys always with me sometimes when i go for a conference they attend and um yeah when it's come my picture outside in public they they go and take it to school and this is the good things i want them to be brought 
and support me because they are the biggest support. Well, it seems that they're very much part of your daily life. Yes. You are a busy woman. You write, you teach, you mentor, you have different events, you're a speaker, uh, you're a consultant. So what is the balance between family and what you do? To remind myself that I'm a daughter, mm -hmm. I'm a sister, mm -hmm. I'm a partner, I'm a mother. And I think this is what a lot of people, they forget it. So daily I have a, like in the alarm, people mm -hmm. they have wake up alarm, yes. maybe meeting alarm. For me, I have calling my mom alarm. <laughs> my kids, especially when they come back from school, going back, uh, going to school, I have different alarm to remind myself like, yes, it's nice. I'm a doctor, engineer, teaching in university, holding a huge project. But the main and the important project, it's my family. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what we, we should remind ourselves. One day we retire, we'll, we'll be retired, mm -hmm. but we cannot be retired from those people mm -hmm. except if we die. And I, I think this is the, the balance I do it for in my life. I hope I can achieve it. <laughs> Sometimes I miss, especially they said Monday, uh, forget the occasion uh, date. And here I, I'm the person, always I forget the date. <laughs> Last moment I remember. But this is normal. I think it's, it's sometimes balance. I'm not saying I'm, I'm brilliant and balancing, but I try my best. Most women, we try to do our best every day. When, when we have kids, it doesn't come with a menu that goes, okay, this is what you do no. with the children. <laughs> and <laughs> different children, the, each children, each boy is it's different. It's totally different. I have a very quiet boy and very naughty and very active <laughs> boy. So when you balance with them, it's, it's different. I think it's different personality and the life not coming with dictionary. Yeah. As you parents, have to, to write your own dictionary. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, parenting is not easy. Nope. For those of you, if, trust me, it is not easy at all. But it's, it's nice. It's, a, yeah. it's something you have to have it, to yes. be honest. Yes. Being the first, having a family, and, and, and you answer all the questions so well, and they're probably thinking, wow, she's perfect. No, I'm she not. She's perfect. <laughs> now, how do you stay grounded and taking care of SWAT, yourself, and no one else? As soon as you're growing in your career, and you're with your family, with children, partner, um, they are growing, they need a lot of things, we forget about ourselves. We mess ourselves like seven days, we are focusing about family, career, hobbies, um, yep. and um, your friend, your other family. For me, it's once a week. I have to take off from everything, ah, from social okay. media, from the WhatsApp, from Ooh. phone, from okay. TV. It just That's for me. Big deal. <laughs> it's difficult in yeah. the beginning because, like, what I should do. And it was good, you know, because you don't know, you don't want to know what is happening with the world. You don't know, like. What is going on? It's going on. No. This is for me. And <laughs> yeah. this is the quality time with me. Either I'm with my book. Oh. If I have a new book, I have to write it. Something people, they don't know I'm an artist. I have, I'm preparing for my seventh solo exhibition. I paint. So when I wow. enter to my workstation, they know for a couple hours, no one knocked the door. I have my bed there. I have uh, my music. I love jazz. And I think this is a lot of people, not only female. Female more because she's a multitask and male as well. You have to have one day, four hours, five hours, if you can, without phone, without social media, mm. without TV, without anyone surrounding you, it's just you. And you remember just yourself you. that you are still single. Yes. And this is the best part. And every Sunday is my day. And once a year, I take a vacation, mm -hmm. like from everything. and. This is what you need to experience that sometimes you need to calm down yeah. because slow down. Yeah. As a human, we crush sometimes emotionally, physically. And um, what make me change that from one year and a half, I entered to the hospital and they told the, the doctor, he, they told because I pressure myself in the career. Uh, I got a blood poison, stomach poison a lot. Mm. And they told me you will die. 3% mm -hmm. uh, worldwide that you will be alive. Mm -hmm. And I keep laughing. If you, after this, I decided like I need to change and, and give one day for myself. And you know, one year and a half, it's very successful. Like 
Sunday is just for Suad, and it's good. Wow. It Sunday. So Sunday, your husband and your kids goes, okay, do not knock on that door. Disappear. <laughs> no one comes. We come. will be in big trouble. If yes. <laughs> no one come. No one talk to me, except is there emergency. Don't ask yeah. me where is the thing. <laughs> don't tell me I'm hungry. <laughs> And I don't want to hear a thousand times, mommy, mommy, mommy. And I think yeah. this is the best thing. <laughs> what a great advice. There we go. That's <laughs> such a great advice. I think as a woman too as well, especially a career woman, when you have kids, you feel guilty that you're leaving them. And I, I'm a mom as well. When I was, Well, they're older now. They're a lot older. But when I was uh, working while they were so young, I feel really guilty. But we also have to compete in a male-dominant world where we have to do twice as hard yes. or we have to showcase that we're, we work twice as hard um, to actually anchor that position and to grow and to compete. And it is a guilt trip sometimes. I, I even think about it. I'm like, it is a guilt trip. Until now I'm guilty. When yes. sometimes my daughters say, you didn't raise me, I raised myself. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> especially when you miss some of their parties, for us, we are working in shifts, sometimes applying. Yeah. And he, and you know, they use it in a proper way if they need something. I noticed this oh, recently. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it goes, hi, mommy. I'm like, I'm your mommy now? <laughs> yes. That's me. they want something. Yes. And if they don't, yeah. it goes, hey. And this is typical. My both sound like it's, I miss their sport day or something. Yeah. And I feel guilty. I come, I yeah. want to hug them or kissing them. And you know, they're like, yeah, it's fine. It's okay. But when he, they come back to me, I notice they, they use it. This guilty moment, the kids, they are so smart. Because oh, even with my, my nephew and my niece, when they call me, yes. because I'm their second mother, and like, I know there's something. When I take them, how are you? Yeah, yeah we are fine. But like, hi, auntie, how are you? We miss you. Yes. So this guilty moment, they use it for them. Serious. They, I think they're, I don't know where they read it from or learn it from or they have a menu, but... Every mom experienced it. I do too as well. But I sometimes feel, oh, I'm, I'm such a lousy mother. <laughs> I use it with my mom. Oh my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Till today, Till today. <laughs> I'm the youngest. And I, she knows the tone. Yeah. And she felt guilty. And she said, mm -mm, don't <laughs> use it with me. Say what you want. And, yeah. and this is the thing. As you grow up, with ever this title, with ever this success and reward, I think the good reward we receive it from the mother, like when you call your daughter, or for example, I call my son, this is the, the reward we, I think it's never uh, expire, yeah. and it's the best. So till today, I call my mom and she knows, don't make me guilty, say what you want. End of the story. <laughs> <laughs> Typical mom, like every that. mom. Don't make me guilty, stop it. <laughs> oh, just tell her, like my mom, she always say, tell me what you want. Don't feel, don't make me feel guilty. You try <laughs> to be your daughter. I, then. <laughs> I will do that. I will do that for sure. Oh my goodness! Now, as as the world evolves, the young we're talking about kids. I mean, they're they think so differently. They want things to be fast. They they look at us and they think. Actually, our generation we took it for granted. <laughs> they think we took it for granted. I've heard it so much times with my my kids. Now, what is your message for Gen Gen Z, Gen M, Gen whatever? who wants to follow a career path, stay focused. Nowadays, the young people love quick and fast and temporary. Building a career is long-term, yes. focused, dedication, hard work. What kind of advice do you have to give them? Well, I always tell them to imagine the word. If you will build a building very fast, mm. and I always bring those, uh, you know, the puzzle or any small boxes or anything's toys, I show them if we build it so fast, yes. it will crash immediately. Yes. If you take it as a basic, slowly, slowly, mm -hmm. it will remain. And and in our career, innovation industry especially, it's a stuff industry. You cannot grow. You have to get step by step. Maybe you have your own way. I'm sorry for saying sneaky way to go to higher management, mm -hmm. be a manager. But you don't have the skill. Yes, the and foundation. And one day you will do you will do the mistake. Yes, you have to grow slowly in your career, understand what is required, and the life is still there. You cannot be, especially when they come for me and they graduate. We want because we we graduate when we graduated from university. Mm -hmm. You started as mechanic. Yes. Then a technician, then yeah. engineer, license aircraft engineer, which you are holding license. Then even with the licensed aircraft engineer, you have a three 
great. Wow. Okay, like a pilot. And then you will be the shift manager as well as well to you reach as a consultant and advisor. Wow. So it's a huge step. A lot of PS students, when they graduated from university, why we are not directly aircraft engineer? <laughs> we have a bachelor, we have higher diploma. And I will give them the tools. And mm -hmm. I said, okay, you have this paper. Try to explain it for me how to fix it. Mm -hmm. And they panic. Mm. And this is the way. You ha the, the life in the university is different in the real life. Mm -hmm. Especially when, when you will be in line maintenance, for example, you have a specific timing. Mm -hmm. The aircraft will land, you have a couple of minutes, sometimes 45 minutes, sometimes one hour, depend on the flight schedule. Mm -hmm. this, this flight should be ready to take off. Mm -hmm. This is a decision making solving problem all this is skill not one day you will take it and i show them like okay show me how to solve it out mm -hmm. lead by example mm -hmm. and i think we need to ta teach them and the university that the life after the university is different a lot of people will come to tell you yeah you will be the best manager you will be the best engineer medical doctor but even the doctor and medical the how like my sister says she's a, a, a pediatric surgeon. Mm -hmm. It takes her more than 10 years mm. only to finish her career, uh, sorry, her education. education. And now when I, took, I look at her, she's still studying. And mm -hmm. this is, I think the new generation should understand. Mm. If you want to be a medical engineering, very difficult um, field. Yeah. Even, uh, I think, in media, yeah. any field, any field, you need to educate yourself. You know, education is, is lifelong. Yes. You learn it forever. And, and nowadays, even with the generation, you need to understand that the basics of the education is your foundation of understanding the theory part. But when you step into the career, it's the beginning of the learning part. Yes. Because that is the where you actually learn your experience, where you make mistakes, and, and whether your mentors and your sponsors are actually going to help you grow to your next level. Yes. Expectations. One thing, too, as well, with a young generation, I find that they set very high expectations for themselves because the technology unfortunately previously we never had phone or ipad or yeah. tvs like we used to have but not like that now when they saw other people mm -hmm. they put their expectations so high mm. they don't understand the challenges and because they saw a lot of things and through the social media through this technology they think that they can reach to this and they put their expectation high, mm. but they are never leave the real life. So when they go to the real life, they enter, they understand what yep. this, the challenges is. And, and what the school never teaches you. Yes. Yeah. It's a different teaching. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. And those ones hurt more, just so you know. <laughs> uh, yes. You have to learn by yourself. You have your own mentor. You have a lot of experts out there can teach you. But real life, you will teach yourself how to stand for yourself, yes. Yeah, yeah. Don't expect that everything's going to be rosy, too, as well. I think you need to understand that if it's rosy, then there's something wrong. Because life is never always rosy. No. We want it to be, but it's never always. you yes. gotta, you got to step on some thorns and go, ouch, I'm not going to go there because it hurts. And learn it while you grow at the same time. We grow to the day we go, we leave. <laughs> You're a cry. Today we've actually covered so much your your aspirations your your passion you. your your wonderful so valuable words for um, everyone that's actually watching the show learning from you your family balance Thanks. Uh, I like to close it with this question all the time is that if someone who's watching you right now is a girl and she's lost she doesn't feel that there's hope and she she's watching she's like I love what she's saying but she's at the end, like she doesn't know what to do. Now, what are your words to help her understand that she can move on? She has to step back, to be honest, and stand, sit with yourself. Ask yourself what you want to be today, what you want to be after one week, what you want to be within a year. A lot of people will never believe in you. A lot of people will try to make you down. A lot of people will think like you are not capable. No one have the faith in you. But I do believe when God created us, each person are unique. Mm -hmm. No one better than anyone. Um, mm -hmm. Like when people, they come to me and say, I want my daughter to be like you. I said, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. Say, I want my daughter to be better than you. Mm -hmm. Because 
when you put your expectation that you are unique, you will do your best. You will fail one, you will fail twice. And as I teach my, my children, I will tell you something. Either you win, either you learn. Nothing called fail, nothing called mm. loss. You choose to be sorry for my losing, sitting beside, and I say, oh, feeling sorry for yourself. Mm. Either you learn to reach to the win. And, and this is what she need to do, either, even if a boy, because some of the boy, they come back to me and I feel lost. I don't know what, especially after high school or even after university or they cannot find job. You have to find what connect your heart with your mind. Mm -hmm. Because people, they use their mind, but they don't use their heart or the opposite. Yes. Connect them together and see what is good for you. Maybe what is good for Saad is not good for the other. And maybe mm -hmm. what is good for other not good for me. Mm -hmm. um, see yourself. Imagine yourself. Put the notes, write for yourself a message. For me, I like to write message for myself, especially when I feel I'm down, mm. if I feel challenges. I have a book, and this is the book, it's just for Suad. I write a letter for myself. Mm. Every week, sometimes, every day, sometimes a month, I don't write for myself. Talk to yourself. It's Maybe people think it's a crazy idea, mm -hmm. but it's so helpful. Like, if for example, from two weeks, I write for myself, like, what I want to be this year, what I want to reach. And the karma, it came like a lot of things I wrote it and I put myself in this position. Mm -hmm. It starts to be happening. Yes, something will happen soon, sometimes maybe uh, end of the year. But I think be grateful to yourself. Put the confidence. No one will help you except your hand. This is my belief. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today has been such a fabulous time spending with Dr. Engineer Swahat. Yeah. And I've learned, I've, I'm have i in love. I'm in love with her before oh, she came, but now I'm in God. love with her more. God bless you, from that. God bless and you. I hope you've learned as much as I have to as well. And as much as we, you know, we, we have a lot of success stories, these types of interviews help me understand why we need to continue on with women empowerment and sharing successful stories of a woman because it gives hope and strength to a lot of women out there that's striving to be better. Um, so thank you so much thank for you, coming to Spotlight. We are so grateful for your story. We're so grateful for you to path uh, for all the women out there in the aviation industry, but plus more, it's not just not that. Your thank example has set a tone for the woman that says, okay, I can do it. She and, can do it, yes. And she looks happy, so I can be happy too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> she can do it if she believes in herself. Thank yeah, you, Blenda, thank for you. this amazing interview. It's my pleasure being always, and hopefully we see it the next generation one day in your show. Oh, absolutely. I can't wait. Yes. I'll <laughs> pass a baton to you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. I'm Dr. Engineer Suad Sultan Shamsi, the first aircraft engineer in United Arab Emirates and Aviation Consultant. I've been spotlighted by Blendeli.